Hello and welcome to our presentation this week titled Keep Your Eye on the MTI. My name is Steve Chappell, the Director of Educational Services here at VectorVest, and I'm delighted to conduct this presentation for you. As many of you are aware, the MTI determines or identifies the underlying trend of the market for us, or the long-term trend. Did you also know that it's instrumental in helping us identify potential market tops or bottoms? Well, let's jump right in the program and take a look. Here we are at the home page for VectorVest, and of course the MTI information is displayed in a variety of places throughout our platform. Right here on the home page in the color guard box just below our market timing gauge, we have an MTI column. If you watched tonight's timing presentation, you would have learned, of course, that the MTI is cast on a 0 to 2 scale, where above 1, the underlying trend of the market is up and below one the underlying trend of the market is determined to be down. Did you also know that by monitoring the level or the movement of the MTI you can get a feel for whether the underlying trend is strengthening or weakening in that certain direction. For example, we stated earlier today in the timing presentation that the underlying trend is of course headed downward and it's also picked up some steam on a week over week basis or it's strengthening to the downside. Having said that, now is really not a great time to be holding equities long because chances are a lot of the gains that you had in your stock positions, you're beginning to give them back to the market. So perhaps the best place to get a really good feel for the market timing indicator behavior is in the market timing graph because here we can begin to see how instrumental the MTI levels and movement are as it pertains to the overall market movement. To do that, I'm going to take us right up to the top to our Graphs tab. Over on the left, we're going to change it from Stock to Market Timing. Here we are in our default vector vest layout, and I'm just going to pull the graph panel out, and we're going to take off the relative timing and buy to sell and focus exclusively on the MTI and how it correlates to the vector vest composite movement. Let's even take off the moving average just for even more clarity. So the first important thing to notice about the market timing indicator, which is down here on our subgraph, is when the MTI crosses above 1, the underlying trend has shifted from a down mode to an up mode. And we can see here that as long as the MTI stays above 1, the market generally has really good performance. When the MTI goes from above 1 to below 1, again the long-term trend has shifted once again, this time into a down mode, it's generally not a good time to be invested when that is the current situation. And we can see this cycle develop over and over again. Here on the 12th of July, for example, we see a resurgence with the MTI, we see it crossing above 1, and the market had beautiful performance for several months. Our most recent crossover, again the MTI headed to the down mode, and this would have occurred right here on the 13th of November, and has been in a down mode and strengthening really ever since. And of course we can see that the market has really been suffering over this last month or so. So to recap, in general terms, particularly for prudent to conservative style investors, you want to think about focusing on being long in securities when the MTI is rising in above one. And consider protecting those profits through any means necessary when the MTI is below one and falling. But to really leverage the power of this awesome indicator, we can begin to pick out some market extremes which will offer even more profit potential with the underlying securities. For example, if we come back here to the most recent market bottom, which was back in June of this year, we'll notice that our market timing indicator on the 25th of June came in at a value of 0.56. This is a critical level around here at VectorVest. Whenever the MTI falls below a value of 0.6, you will see us begin to use phrasing 
through Strategy of the Week presentations and other places like seminars and events that the market is searching for a bottom. It doesn't mean that the bottom is absolutely in place yet, but when we get down to that critical level of 0.6, we're searching for a market bottom. The first indication that you would receive from us that perhaps that market bottom truly is in play is when the price of the composite works its way higher on a week over week basis. We call that the primary wave. So what I'm going to do is zoom in around this blast off area and here we can see a couple of very valuable pieces of information more clearly. One thing that I want you to notice right away is when the price of the composite is continuing to move down and hit lower lows. What's beginning to happen with the market timing indicator? Not only is it below that critical level of 0.6, we're beginning to hit higher lows. This is a classic divergence and yet another reassurance that perhaps we are beginning to see that market bottom in place. All we would consider waiting for then for a first opportunity to begin nibbling at buying stocks again would be for the primary wave to reinforce the fact that this truly is p potentially the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and change the market calls to the primary wave and we can see a green primary wave up comes into play just a couple of days later. Now you'll notice there were a couple of green triangles a bit earlier on. Now this, these occurred before it would have been easy to determine a divergence with the indicators. It's not until really the second pivot and the few days later that you would begin to really think with the um, issuance of that primary up call. If we looked at this chart on that day, we can clearly see the higher pivots on the MTI with the lower pivots on the price of the composite. So this is around here a classic setup for identifying a major market turn. Of course we feel better and better about that turn as we receive more and more signals. And certainly by the time we receive a confirmed up call, which would happen weeks later in some cases, and we can see it here not until middle of July on the 12th that we receive the confirmed market up call. So we're going to go back to the primary wave as, as a critical indication, a preliminary indication that that market bottom is truly set in place. This is an opportune time to start picking up stocks. Now just as we can pick out market bottoms with the MTI levels and divergences, we can also begin to identify tops using the same kind of methodology. So as the market rallied from here, and we can see it slowed down and picked back up and had many pivots along the way. All along the road through that period of time, the MTI was hitting higher highs. Now when the MTI really began to turn over and hit lower pivots, for example, we'd feel pretty good, certainly by here, for example, that the MTI is strongly gravitating back towards one. It's hitting lower lows, or lower highs, I should say, on the indicator, while the market is continuing to hit higher highs. Again, that classic divergence. We have an extraordinarily strong down day in the market, indicated by that large candlestick. We also have the issuance of a primary wave down. Now had you decided to react earlier on any one of these red triangles, I'm not sure that that was such a bad decision. I'm going to assume that you waited for worst case scenario in that big down day and now plenty of security in knowing that that MTI is in fact hitting lower highs. So if we looked at exiting our long positions on at least our capital appreciation part of our portfolios, we'll see what kind of incredible power that would yield for us in terms of retaining profits. We're also going to take a quick peek at 
getting in early enough to really see tremendous profits at that point. And the best way to do it, again, is by nailing the bottom and exiting near the tops. That's the name of the game, folks. So remember these dates. We're going to look at the 27th of June as buying just top VST stocks and closing those positions as of September 30. The interesting thing that you'll note is initially when we look at the quick test, it's going to run it all the way to the current time. And I'm going to want you to take a look at the numbers as far as annualized rates of return when we begin to exit out and take profits near this market peak versus holding those stocks all the way through even to today. So again, we're going to be focusing on this juicy part of a rally off a classic bottom because we may in fact be seeing signs of that just around the corner as we speak today. And I'll come back and reinforce that before we leave tonight's presentation. So from here, I'm going to move us right over into the stock viewer. We're going to keep things really simple today. To get there, I'm going to go to viewers at the top. I'm going to click on the stock viewer over on the left. And this, of course, is where we warehouse the 1,700 plus Australian shares. And as hopefully all of you know, we rank those shares from top to bottom every single day by value, safety, and timing. We look at the relative value, which is the upside potential for any company on a zero to two scale. This company on a current basis has a relative value of 1.68, which is excellent. Anything above 1.4 is considered excellent. It has a safety rating or relative safety rating on a zero to two of 1.45, which also would be deemed excellent. And it has a relative timing above one as well, indicating the short term price direction is up. We wrap those three indicators into one called VST, value, safety, and timing. And that's how we rank the stocks top to bottom every day, by the best combinations of those three factors. The true power here is we can go back to any day in the past and see how these stocks would have performed over a given market period. So to do that, I'm going to take our calendar back to June. And we're going to go to the 27th. And we have a different list of stocks. But again, you'll notice that by and large, we have three time winners right here across the top of the stock viewer. Most of the top 20 or so have buy recommendations. Most of them are undervalued. These are exactly the kind of stocks we want you to think about buying. Now at Market Bottoms, we can get more sophisticated and do some bottom fishing. Perhaps we'll get into that in another session. I want to make sure that you really understand the core basic philosophy of VectorVest. And so what I'm going to do here is show you the price performance of our top stocks from this June 27th date all the way up to it was September 30, where we had that big down candle and we had the divergence on the MTI and everything indicating that that this part of the rally was over. So what I'm going to do is come right up to the top. I want to start by quick testing 20 stocks just to give you a feel for the power we're dealing with here. So here we are. We're looking at holding the stocks that were listed on the stock viewer 27th of June all the way up to the current time. Had we done that, we'd be up 16% on the basket or 35% annualized. And that's really strong performance when we look at the composite. All 1,700 stocks have only climbed 5% over that current period. Watch this annualized rate of return as we knock the marker back, or the end date back, to September the 30th. If I run the test, it nearly doubles. It goes up to 62%, and we still have roughly that same 16% gain. So the capital appreciation part of the rally is over when we start to see these classic divergences with our MTI. It's best if we can take that opportunity to seize these profits through any means we can by selling stocks outright, using options as protection, whatever the case may be wait for the market to pull back and start to move up again. Then we can take the protection off, 
and we can start buying stocks again and making money in the market. And it's just the best way to go about making money with VectorVest. Now if I close the quick test, let's see how we would do if we went to 10 stocks instead of 20. Logic here, the top 10 stocks should in fact be better quality than the top 20 basket. You've got fewer positions, which tends to give you a little bit more upside potential on that basis alone. But remember, all these stocks are ranked by value, safety, and timing to begin with. So if we quick test just the top 10, not a loser in the bunch. We have 10 winners, no losers. They're up 23% as a basket or 89% annualized as of September 30. Well, what happens if we drop it to five? Again, by carrying only five positions, you are increasing your risk to market pullback, but you're also typically going to see larger gains. So here again, five of five winners, 35% return, 135 annualized. All you need to do now is figure out where you fit in that spectrum. Do I want the extra security of extra stocks or am I happy to go about business in just five positions? But that's it. That's all there is to it. The MTI is a tremendous tool. It affords you tremendous opportunity to make money in the Australian share market. Even if you use just that indicator alone from a market timing analysis standpoint. So I want to go back to the market timing graph and show you why many of you should be considering getting your shopping list ready, focusing on some of these high VST stocks uh, that you like. Because on the market timing graph, if we just look at the most recent three months, we'll take off all the signals and all the noise. We've had a considerable pullback in the market. We talked about having the bullish engulfing pattern on the most recent candlestick formations. We've talked about the fact that the MTI is now down to point, point 0.68 here on the 12th, point 0.69 now, so we're nearly down to that point 0.6 threshold. Now, here's the facts. It may not get down to the point 0.6. The further it goes down, the more reassurance you should have that you're truly searching for a bottom. Point being, we may want to start nibbling at stocks should we just receive a primary up wave call within the next few days. Doesn't mean we have to go all fully invested. We might just start nibbling and see if this is going to be where the market starts to blast off. You'll feel better and better about it as you receive more and more confirmations of the primary wave up. Green lights in the price column of the color guard. Confirm calls. You just begin adding to your positions and profiting as the market rallies. And from there, again, should the market actually blast off and rally, the higher the MTI gets, the more cautious you ought to be with those positions. Typically, we start searching for market tops when the MTI gets up to about 1.5, 1.6. But in the Australian share market as of late, we haven't gotten up to those levels as it, there has not been a strong enough underlying trend for it to reach those lofty levels. So I would just say this, as you climb higher and higher above one, you're sort of climbing the wall of worry and you should think about tightening stops just because, you know, the market tends to be reversing the higher it goes. The key thing to look for again are going to be those classic divergences. So just as we saw back here in September, as the composite continues to hit higher and higher highs and the MTI hits lower highs, that's your real warning sign. And certainly by the time the MTI crosses below one, it's time to put some protection in no matter what. It's just not worth letting the capital appreciation erode away. So hopefully we've given you some optimism about the current market over the coming weeks. Potentially we could have another blast off. But I want you to remember don't act before all the information is in play. Let's wait for at least the primary wave to turn up before we begin nibbling at stocks and we can begin adding as more and more confirmation is received through VectorVest. I want to thank you for tuning in to our presentation on Keep Your Eye on the MTI. 
and we will be having a follow-up live Q&A webcast on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Sydney time and you can simply register at www.vectorvest.com slash events. Thanks again for tuning in this week and we'll see you next week right here at VectorVest University.